thing people don't know about Davion, he was player of the year last year. Last year was his first year playing any full-time varsity at the high school level. Um, wow. His freshman year, he was not with us. He was at another school. He played JV, dressed in varsity, didn't really play. He transferred to us as a sophomore, was declared ineligible, and just played junior varsity. He didn't play varsity at all his sophomore year. So last year, his junior year was his first year really playing major varsity minutes. And so to all of a sudden go from you never even played varsity minutes, now you're player of the year in the whole state, that doesn't happen for a lot of guys. And so, but it just True. showed how talented he was and how good he was. And I think the difference this year is he's become more patient now. Um, he's been able to play more like a true point guard, especially when we need him to. You know, he's more of a scoring point guard, which everybody knows that about him. You know, that's fine. Uh, right. But he's shown that But he's shown that ability that when he has to get those assists and get everybody involved, he can do that. Um, he, he can show that he can be a really good passer when that's when he needs to be. And so I've been proud of his maturity, um, his patience. He's shown a lot more patience at times um, on offense. Letting the game come to him, whereas last year he kind of went and took it, you know, and this year he's kind of waiting, letting it come to him. So he's just really matured and grown as a person and, and as a player from last year to this year. The reality is there aren't a lot of dominant post players in high school basketball, They're just, especially not in 4A oh. class where we're at. So it's not a big issue. You know, if, if we were in 7A, it might be a bigger problem. Because you got bigger, you know, you got bigger players up there. But there's yep. just not a lot. There's not a lot of high school guys that get on the block, you throw on the ball, and they're just gonna go to work and make you pay. There are some. I, we've gone against some. There are some, and when you face those guys, a lot of times you got to send double teams at them and try to. And usually we just, we know, I'm just that person. Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> the motion <laughs> no light problem. keeps going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I need to get up and turn this light on. It keeps cutting off. There we go. No but um. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, I, I, you know, I say I make guys, you know, I wait to see if they can show that, hey, okay, you're that good in the low post that we have to double team you. Um, we yep. don't I just trust my guys to play you one on one. And even, I mean, in all honesty, a lot of times guards don't throw the ball in the post a lot anyway. So even if you have a post player that might hurt us inside, your guards probably won't throw him the ball very much. <laughs> so we, we're able to get away because guards don't – I mean, I've had to do that with the, my guards in the past. Throw the ball in the post. Throw it in the post. Guards don't want right. to throw the ball in the post today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sports Talk with Today I'm here with McDonough head coach, Mr. Uh, William Thomas. Excited to talk to his group, uh, a bunch that had a really great season last year. They are off to another hot start. they got a big game coming up Friday night. They're going to play Place Academy. Uh, both teams are number one right now in the region at 6-0. and So just here to spend a little bit of time. But, Coach – uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and, you know, how long you've been at McDonough. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so uh, I've been at McDonough for, uh, I started in, uh, well, it's hard to answer because, you know, McDonough used to be Henry County High School. Some people know that, some people don't. So I started at Henry County High School in 2017, 2017-18 school year, and then the nineteen twenty season, we switched over and became McDonough. So I've been at McDonough since McDonough started, but we were Henry County before that. So uh, since, since the 2017-18 season, so this is my sixth year. You know, I'm not good at math. I'm a language arts person, but some of that remains about six years I've been here. I was at uh, I was the head coach at Monticello before that, to Jasper County High School um, in Monticello, Georgia. So I was there before that. Uh, so that's been my journey as a head coach. I was assistant coach for a lot of, a lot of different places um, a lot of years before that. So that's just kind of about me and, and uh, you know, what I'm about, but you know, I love this game of basketball. I loved it as a player. I love it even more as a coach, honestly. So, yeah. Yes, sir. And let's talk real quick, coach, about last season. You guys had a 26 and three record. You made it all the way to the semifinals, a close loss to West over 42 to 39. Um, what do you remember from that game, coach? Um, and then what do you think your seniors, because this, this is a senior led group, kind of took away from that, that loss and have fueled them into the season? Yeah. So we learned some things that we need to, uh, you need to get better at coming into this year from that game, uh, things on the stretch that we saw that got us that, you know, we said, okay, this year, this, you know, we have to make sure this doesn't get us, um, that helped us some. But I think for the most part, I think, you know, the players, and I told them after the game, I said, you got to remember the sting of this and use that to motivate you next year so you don't feel it again. Um, you don't want to feel that type of pain. It's, 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 it's one thing just to lose at the end of the season, you know, because most, it's only one team can win it all. So most teams are going to lose at the end of the season. But it's another thing, that it's, it's about how you lose also and the way we lost. I think is what stung so much worse to to us and, and to our guys. And so we just kind of learned about putting that work in and, and things that we had to tweak as a coaching staff, as a, as a coach, some things that I needed to tweak 
Uh, and, I, and I think you have to use, you know, I don't, I don't like losing. I don't like having to wait to losing to uh, learn. You know, I want to be able to learn and wins also, but you definitely have to be able to learn from the losses. And from that loss, we definitely learned some things that I think, I think made me better as a coach and made them better players. And if you could, without revealing too much, Coach, what, just pinpoint one, what, what was one of the big things you learned just from that loss? If you had to pinpoint, like, one thing, was it turnovers? Was it just the, the mindset? What was, like, one big thing you learned from that? Mindset was the biggest thing. I learned about the mindset of some of the players, some things that I need to do to help their mindset, uh, mindset that they were in in that game that I didn't know because I didn't kind of uh, prepare them for it. You know, as a coach, you think everybody's okay. They look okay. Okay, everybody's all right. And the game time hits and you realize something's not right out here. Yeah. Um, and so the, the mindset was the biggest thing and learning how to keep their minds focused, keep their confidence up, things like that. So that, you know, when you're in those tight game situations, when the money's on the line, um, not only do you know who you can rely on, but guys have the confidence to know, hey, I can be that guy and I can help us, you know, uh, win this game. So that was the, the mindset was the biggest thing I learned. Yes, sir. And let's talk about this season, Coach. Only two losses. Both were very close. I want to start with the Buford one. Three-point loss, 57-54. What happened in that game? I saw that you guys only shot, I think, 29% of that game. What else kind of stood out to you in that game? It seemed like it was more defensive. But what stood out in that game to you? Uh, we just – and this is no knock to Buford. They, they have a really good team. They play great. But, I mean, we just – we played horrible that day. We just – we played really bad. Um, we missed a lot of easy shots. You know, you talked about the shooting percentage. We missed a lot of easy shots. Um, we didn't shoot the ball well at all, you know, they, which I knew they would do. They play different zones. They switched up, put different zones on us and uh, kept us from penetrating and getting to the basket, which is fine. I, I would do the same thing if I was going against us. And uh, we, but we got shot opportunities that we just missed. I mean, late in the game, one point game, we had like two layups at the basket that we just point blank missed, you know, just missed layups, like stuff like that. And so we learned that we have to bring, the effort every night, we have to bring the intensity every single night, every single day. We can't have days off, can't have games off. I think that's right. one of those games where we kind of took off and, and didn't bring it the entire entirety of the game. And so that was big. And I you know I had some key players that weren't as aggressive as I liked them to be. And I talked to them about it after the game, and they understood that, you know, listen, if, if we're going to lose with you, I'd, I'd rather us lose with you shooting a lot of shots then us losing, you shot two or three shots. I'd rather, I'd right. rather look and say, okay, he shot the ball too much versus why weren't you shooting? What were you doing? You know? So yeah, we shot the ball very poorly, just a bad game, but you know, credit to Buford though. They played a great game. You know, I knew what they could do and I knew that they were one of those teams that are very streaky shooting the ball. Um, if they don't shoot the ball well, you're probably going to be okay. If they do shoot it well, you're in trouble and they shot the ball well that day and they, they can get really hot as a team. And as a team, I mean, you got four or five guys out there that are hot from three. And it becomes very difficult to defend, and, and they got in that mode. So, yeah, that's what happened there. Got you. And then, Coach, for for an example for that game, right, you struggled a little bit shooting. You're telling guys to be, you know, more aggressive. Coming into the next practice after that game, you know, do you it kind of instruct your guys, do you, like, have them put up some easy shots, you know, just so they get back in the rhythm? Do you, you know, have them go to the free throw line, hit, like, 100, 200 free throws? Like, what's the things you employ in, like, practice just to ensure, like, you know, um, shooting like that doesn't happen again? Yeah, so I did change up some things we do in practice, uh, free throw wise, uh, to help their percentage. You know how we calculate it in practice, and I think it's been helping since then. Um, they're seeing their percentages in practice, so their percentages, our percentage as a game in, in games as a team, is going up. So I think that's helped. Um, and, and and again, after that game, you know it's been a while because we had a game the very next day. You know we played Buford the very next day. We played Lions. So I didn't have right. time to come in practice and deal with the Buford game. We had to get ready for Lions the next day. And we played a lot better against Lions and we ended up winning that game. Um, so I think some of the things that we that we knew we messed up on in Buford, we corrected them, you know, against Lions. We played with more intensity. You know, we, we shot the ball better. Uh, some things that we didn't do the day before, we did that. So, yeah, but after, I always use losses, you know, show the film, show them the things that they did wrong and, and really stress those things even extra hard in practice, you know, after that. Yes, sir. And then the other game, uh, it was Green Forest, two-point loss. Um, you know, what kind of stood out to you now? I believe that was a tournament game, but you guys played a really tough and close. Uh, what kind of stood out in that game for you, in the Green Forest loss? <clears throat> what stood out that game is it's very difficult to beat a team when they have two seven-footers and a six-eight in the three-two zone. <laughs> so <laughs> it was it, it, it was tough, but it was, it was fun. It was a fun game. Um, you know, we had a lead in the first half. We had a double-digit lead, actually, in the first half. 
you know, they made a run going into the half. I think one, one of the things we definitely learned from that when they went zone on us, especially in the second quarter, uh, we got impatient on offense and we kind of instead of letting the offense turn over and trying to get a, you know easy shot, kind of made one or two passes and then threw up a quick shot. And that allowed them to cut into the lead initially. And so, and so since then, since that game, that's something that we've really been stressing that, hey, listen, teams have the teams are going to zone us. We're going to face zone against teams. And so we've got to be patient in the zone offense. We have zone offense. We have plays against zone. We have to be patient and work them and, and let them work. And I think we didn't do that enough, you know, in that game. And so it causes, and as I tell them, when you're playing a game that close, I mean, we lost about two points. So you lose a game by one basket. It's the little things that cause you to lose, such as not being patient on offense and rushing the shot instead of getting the easy one. Where now maybe you don't lose that game, but you know, so those are things right. that we kind of learn from them. Green Force is a really good team, obviously. And so dealing with that length in the zone, you have to be extra patient because against a shorter team, the shot may come quicker. Against this right. team, it's going to take more ball reversals to get to that shot, to get those big guys moving. You got to be patient. And so we kind of lost our patience. And I think that it caught up with us at the end. For sure. And, Speaking about this matchup against Pitts Cayman got coming up, what stood out to you on film so far? Have you been able to watch it, Coach? What are some things they kind of do well? And, you know, without revealing too much, what's kind of your plan, you know, for them? <laughs> so I like went off in the end. Uh, uh, no yeah, so, you know, watching film on pace, I haven't seen anything that I didn't expect to see. I know they'll be very well coached, and they are very well coached. Uh, they're very disciplined. They, they run really good uh, sets in the half court. Uh, they, they, they run them with precision. Um, they don't take bad shots. They take good shots. If they don't have a good shot, they won't shoot it. They'll get it to the next guy, let him take a good shot. And so that's very key. You know, defensively, they're sound. They mix it up on you. They'll play man. They'll play zone. They'll play half court. they play full court. And that's most good teams you see. They, th they, they hit you from different angles. They don't, they're not going to play one defense all game. They're not going to run one thing on offense all game. They're going to run different things. And so you have to prepare for different things when you're going against them. You can't prepare for one defense or one set play or one player. You got to stop. You got to stop everybody. So that's what I've seen. That's what I expected to see. Uh, so that's no surprise. And we we have to be ready for it. it. It's it's difficult to prepare for a team like that that can may have different weapons, different guys. Because so they may not have that one All American guy that's unstoppable, but they got five guys on the court that can all score, that are all threats, and you got to worry about all of them. And a lot of times that's even worse. You know, when they when when the team just has the one stud, you can kind of <laughs> zero in on him and I don't have to worry about these guys. That's yeah, right. But when it's, yeah, but when the team has five guys that can all shoot, that can all handle, that can all that's much more difficult to deal with. So yeah. Yes, sir. And let's talk about more about you, coach. Your team, senior led group. Uh, I think you got back three of your main scorers who are seniors. Um, how important <laughs> is that, coach, kind of going into the season, going into the run you want to have? going into the postseason, how important is to have all that experience back with guys you know, you know, we're just just so close to getting there last year? Yeah, it's important because I think there's a level of confidence they play with after being, you know, uh, you know, Mom McDowell, he's, uh, you know, one of my seniors. He's been starting on this team since his sophomore year. So there's a level of uh, experience and knowledge he's going to have by starting varsity all these years uh, and being in this position all these games. I mean, he's been to back-to-back -back Final Fours. You know, his sophomore year, we were like the Cinderella. We weren't supposed to go. We were very young, started off the season, maybe one and four. We were below 500 going into Christmas break. Like, we were really young that year, and we caught fire, and we surprised everybody and went to the Final Four. You know, last year, we went to the Final Four, but we were expected, we expected to win it all. We, you know, we came up short. But, right. but when you have people like that that have, that have been that deep, you know, that many years, there's a level of confidence that they have to know, okay, I know how to navigate this. I know how to get to this point. And and same with the other guys, uh, Davion, you know, two-year starter, Avante Nichols, um, two-year starter. Keenan Gray, you know, I'm forgetting about him. He's not a senior. He's a junior. But he's a three-year starter. He was starting for me as a ninth grader at point guard. So, wow. you have, so I have two three-year starters. So the, the experience is there. Um, it makes my job easier, easier as a coach. They recognize things on the court. They can adjust uh, without me having to call a timeout and tell them to adjust it. They can adjust it on their own, or I can just kind of yell it on the fly in the game. They know and they know where to get. And, and, and you know, I can, I can change the defense at the last second and they can get to it quickly because they understand because they've been playing. And it's also good for the young guys playing behind them. I got some young, talented guys on the varsity who don't have their level of experience. And I think it helps those young guys learn faster because, OK, I got these experienced guys who can play in order. I can watch them. And so all that all that combined um, is big when you have that type of experience on your team. Certainly is, coach. And, you know, for you. 
I also want to ask, Coach, what has impressed you most about your ball club? You mentioned the experience having those three-year starters, two-year starters, but what has impressed you from the start of the season to where you are now, a really important region play, and then before you hit that region turn, what's impressed you about your ball club so far this year? I would have to say their, their effort and their intensity on the defensive end. Uh, they've really, really defended well this year. I can't make – honestly can't complain a lot about their defense. Obviously, as a coach, I'm going to find mistakes. They're going to make mistakes here and there, and I'm going to point them out. Um, you know, we have lapses like any team has. But overall, from game one up until our last game on uh, Monday against Sandy Creek, they've played really, really great defense. They've really gotten after people. Okay, so I think the last one left off on you saying what you were pressing with your ball club. I think you said the def- uh, defensive intensity and, you know, how they, you know, their approach and how they've been kind of coming in towards the season where you started and then where you at now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the biggest thing. I've been really proud of their defensive effort um, and how they've just played uh, such aggressive defense and unselfish defense as a team. And that's really been the difference. You know, we, we were a really good defensive team last year too, but I think we've gone to another level this year. Yes, sir. And then you mentioned Amon McDowell, and you've been coaching him since his sophomore year. So, Coach, what did you see? Because sometimes you'll see a, a guy that's young and talented, but sometimes the moment can be too big for him. But obviously it never was for Amon. He's been able to start since then. So what makes him so special at that young age starting and then, you know, to kind of where he's grown from sophomore year to where he's now in the senior year and leading this group? Yeah, I mean, a few things. One, um, you know, he's a coach's son. His dad is a coach. So I think it, it, a lot of times it helps when you – when you have a parent, their coaches, and they, you, you, so you hear a lot more. You're around the game more. You, you know, get more knowledge. So I think that helps him. Um, I, I, that's helped him a lot. Uh, he, and because of that, he's very coachable. You know, he listens, does what he's asked to do, does what he needs to do. Um, um, and it, one thing that was good for him coming in that sophomore year is we had lost a lot from the year before, so it was like our our down year, our rebuilding year, and so he got a chance to really learn you know, on the job. There were no, when we had two seniors on that team that year. Um, one had no interest in playing college, but really both of them did. They, they were, you know, they liked basketball. They didn't love it. So they weren't our main guys. So he didn't have that senior leadership like that. So he kind of came in as a sophomore and kind of got thrust into that main guy role. And he had his bumps and bruises, ups and downs, but it helped him to grow really fast because he had to. And that's why by the end of the year, uh, you know, we surprised everybody. He ended up making, you know, all state with, you know, coming in, nobody knew anything about him. He ended up making all state team because of that, uh, that state run that we made. Um, but yeah, I think his, you know, having a father that coached and, and being so coachable and willing to listen and being put in the thrust in a situation where he had to be that guy, even though he on another team, he might not have been ready. No, our team had to be ready. We got to do it. We don't have anybody else. Go do it. And it was right. struggles early, but he, it really forced him to grow up fast. Got you. And then let's talk about Davion Thomas. I saw last year he led you in uh, points per game this year. This year he's third. I believe McDowell has taken that back over. But what did you see from him as far as a growth point from his junior year to his senior year right now? And what kind of does he bring to your team as that point guard? Uh, with him, that is definitely the mental aspect of the game. He's really learned how to be patient. The thing people don't know about Davion, he was player of the year last year. Last year was his first year playing any full-time varsity at the high school level. Um, wow. His freshman year, he was not with us. He was at another school. He played JV, dressed in varsity, didn't really play. He transferred to us as a sophomore, was declared ineligible, and just played junior varsity. He didn't play varsity at all his sophomore year. So last year, his junior year, was his first year really playing major varsity minutes. And so to all of a sudden go from you never even played varsity minutes, now you're player of the year in the whole state, that doesn't happen for a lot of guys. And so, but it just True. showed how talented he was and how good he was. And I think the difference this year is he's become more patient now. Um, he's been able to play more like a true point guard, especially when we need him to. You know, he's more of a scoring point guard, which everybody knows that about him. You know, that's fine. Uh, right. But he's shown that But he's shown that ability that when he has to get those assists and get everybody involved, he can do that. Um, he, he can show that he can be a really good passer when that's when he needs to be. And so I've been proud of his maturity, um, his patience. He's shown a lot more patience at times um, on offense letting the game come to him, whereas last year he kind of went and took it, you know, and this year he's kind of waiting, letting it come to him. So he's just really matured and grown as a person and, and as a player from last year to this year. Yes, sir. And let's talk about the paint, Coach, the interior. How has that been for you this year? I know you mentioned playing an opponent earlier this year, a couple seven-foot guys, but how was the paint? What's your tallest kind of defender, your player, and how has that been for you on the interior this season? 
Yeah, so that's been our if, – if you want to point to a weakness of, uh, on us, that's it. Uh, we don't really have true inside presence. Uh, our tallest starter is my son, Nigel Thomas. He's 6'7". He's a guard. He's a 6'7 guard, about 160-something pounds, 67 pounds, not, not big, muscular, strong. He plays guard, but for us, he has to play defensively. He has to defend the post. Um, Avante Nichols the same way. Vontae, you know, about 6'3 in shoes on his tippy toes. <laughs> and he, but he has to defend the post a lot. Um, and he's able to do it because he's strong and he jumps so well. And he's so athletic, so he can overcome that. Um, and then we have a couple of bigs that will come in off the bench for us. But we don't, you know, last year, you know, I had a couple more big bodies uh, that could really hold down the paint for us. Um, they graduated. And so this year I haven't had that. But we've done a great job as a team of not letting that um, hurt us too bad. Against Green Forest, it was just too much. We're seven feet tall, and there's only so much you can do with that. But outside of them, we've done a pretty good job um, covering up the fact, making up for the fact that we're not real strong inside. We don't really have a true post player in our starting lineup. We're really starting five guards. Uh, so we just make up for it the best way we can by just playing, you know, playing that paint as a team. Yes, sir. And I, actually, I'm not revealing too much, Coach. So when you have that, do you more so, like, try to force teams into turnovers, full-court press, full-court trap? You try more zone. You just throw a whole bunch of different things at different teams. I do I do that anyway? The reality is there aren't a lot of dominant post players in high school basketball. They're just, especially not in four A class where we're at. So it's not a big issue. You know, if, if we were in seven A, it might be a bigger problem because you have bigger. You know, you got bigger players up there. But there's yeah. just not a lot. There's not a lot of high school guys that get on the block, you throw on the ball, and they're just going to go to work and make you pay. There are some. I, we've gone against some. There are some. And when you face those guys, a lot of times you got to send double teams at them and try to – and usually we just – we know I'm just that person. Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> the most <laughs> no light problem. keeps going on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I need to get up and turn this light on. It keeps c- cutting off. There we go. No but, um, you know, a lot of times um, – you know, I, I, you know, I said I make guys. You know, I wait to see if they can show that. Hey, okay, you're that good in low post that we have to double team you. Um, if we yeah. don't. I just trust my guys to play you one on one. And even, I mean, in all honesty, a lot of times guards don't throw the ball in the post a lot anyway. So even if you have a post player that might hurt us inside, your guards probably won't throw him the ball very much. <laughs> so we <laughs> we're able to get away because guards don't. I mean, I've had to do that with my guards in the past. Throw the ball in the post. Throw it in the post. Guards don't want right. to throw the ball in the post today. They don't. No. So even if even if a team has a guy that probably could kill us inside, his guards are probably not giving him the ball. So we're usually okay with it. Um, but yeah, so it has, it's not too much of an issue. But there are some games when it becomes an issue, we just got to do our best with it. Yes, sir. And let's talk about back against with the offense. Again, four scores. You got four scores that are in double figures averaging this year. So offensive, again, we talked about the experience and the group that's kind of close-knit together. But – do you depend more on them for your offensive kind of attack? You run like different sets and plays to get them involved. What do you like to really do offensively? Well, all, all of that, <laughs> everything. But, I mean, like you said, I do have four guys that can score. Um, I have set plays that I can run for any of them. Um, and they also, and, and, and at the same time, none of them need set plays either. So I don't have to. A lot of times I may do it if I just say, hey, you know, I want to get him going. Usually we'll you know, start the game with a set play who I want to go to first. You know, I, I can run – I can start the game with a set play for pretty much any of them. And I was picking as random. We'll, we'll go with you to start the game off and see where we go from there. Um, but I don't have to call a set play for them. But I can. Or if I see one of them has a hot hand, then I'll call some plays for him a little more because all right, he's got it going, so let's call some more plays for him. But we've had some games where I didn't call any set plays. Where I just said, go five out, y'all pass and cut and, and go to work. Because, again, with an experienced team, you don't have to do all that set play calling. You can just let them play. And that's hard right. to defend as an opposing team. One thing, I can scout your plays and try to stop your plays. But when you say all five guards are going to spread out, they're going to pass and cut, and you're just going to have to adjust from there, I can do that with this group because of their experience. So I do that when I can. Yes, sir. And a couple more questions before I let you go, Coach. One, Mm -hmm. if you had to pinpoint one thing, Coach, that you just – you want your team to improve on or just a couple things that just to kind of fine-tune, you know, before you go on this run, what are some things you, you, you you would say? I would probably say, and I kind of mentioned this in the Green Forest game, patience on offense, uh, especially in zone, but even in man sometimes. I think in man, because I have guys that can score and can create their shot, sometimes we get spoiled because a lot of times it's not that difficult for my guys to get to the shots that they want, especially when they play together. 
it's not that difficult for him to do that because I have so many guys that can score the ball, you know. So, but sometimes when you play really tough teams like a Pace Academy, you're not going to get those shots that easy. You're going to have to work for it more. So just that patience, and, and that's what we've been working on a lot in practice lately too. If we just get that patience down, I think that's that's probably the biggest thing. Got you. And then, Coach, what's your ultimate goal of what you want to kind of accomplish this year with this group? What 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 would be a successful season for McDonough High School in your opinion? That's a great question. Um, I mean, obviously, we want to win the state championship. I wouldn't pretend and say we don't. We 100% want to do that. But as I always tell my guys, the, the, the key is making sure we reach our maximum potential. If there's a team in 4A that is just flat out better than us and we play the best we can play and that team just beats us, I can live with that. I've been in that situation multiple times where, hey, that team was just better. And I'm okay with that. And if that happens to us, I'm perfectly okay. Um, but if, if that's not the case, if we have the best team, then we need to know at the end of this year that we that we reached our potential and we won that championship. So it's just a matter of us of knowing that we played to our maximum potential on both ends on that night against that opponent. And if they were the better team and they were the better team. But while, like I said, while we want to win the state championship, I hate to make it championship or bust with any teams. I just don't think that's fair to the players. You know, championships are so hard. I've talked to so many championship coaches and they tell you, coach, it's so hard. As good as you are, you you can still got to have some luck to go. You got to keep people healthy. You got to hope a yeah. call here or there doesn't go against you. There's so many things. So I don't want to put it on my guys and say, if you don't win a championship, we weren't successful because that's not accurate, you know, and that's not fair to them. You know, we might have a key player out with an injury and that maybe, you know, keeps us from winning, but were we not successful? No, you know, so, but that the goal is to win the state championship. And as long as we reach our full potential, whatever that is, I'm good with it. Yes, sir. Well, I want to say, thanks, uh, Coach, thank you so much for doing this. Um, definitely appreciate uh, talking to you, learning more about your team. Yeah, you guys are going to be featuring my game of the week this week. I think it's one of the best games uh, this weekend for sure. You guys against Pace Academy, two top-tier teams.